leadership. That's, that's what you're coming into Primera going to get trained for. We don't train producers. We don't train salespeople. We're trying to train people into leaders. That is what's going to set you apart from other people. Um, I think that you know if I, if I meet a salesperson, someone that does pure sales, like in real estate or whatever, and they make my income, I just feel like we're different because you know, Shaq and I, we have a room like this that shows up on a Saturday morning. No one gets paid to be here. It's a volunteer army. You know, it's a morning of a weekend. And that guy making the same amount of money, I don't think that he has the skill to be able to do that right. because he's, he's pure sales. So the question is, do you want to become that kind of person that can build an audience, that can build an attendance, that can build a team of people? That's how you're going to develop true freedom for yourself. But it takes very different skills than sales. In sales, like she just went over, it's the numbers. If you, if you learn how to present the numbers, interpret the numbers, and you're in Primerica where the products kind of sell themselves because we do the right thing every single time, it, you're, you can get a lot of clients. If you can get in front of a lot of people, you can get a lot of sales, right? If someone's not making money in Primerica, it's not Primerica or the products, it's that person isn't getting in front of enough people. No one quits Primerica when their appointment book is full, right? Yeah. People quit because they don't have enough appointments. But leadership is very, very different. It takes a completely different skill set, you know? But my, my team, they spend a lot of time with me. If I was a faker, if I was a liar, if I was a fraud, if I was a bad person, if I was a cheater, they would know it because they're spending time with me. So I had to change a lot of things. I wasn't, I wasn't a born leader. Some people say leaders are born. Maybe, right? But I, I know for a fact you can develop yourself into a leader because I was very far from being a leader. I was conforming to what everybody else was doing. I don't do that anymore, right? So let's talk about the areas where we need to have strength in leadership. Number one is change. When you, when you, if you want to be in leadership, you have to embrace change. What amateurs do, what losers do, people that don't win, they resist change. Notice that about people. Everybody wants a different result, but when you tell them what they need to do, they don't want to do it, right? I want to lose weight. Man, you got to get on the treadmill. You got to stop eating these foods. You got to get to the gym. They don't want to do it because you know what? That's a change. So we have changes in Primerica as well. And next time there's a change that happens, watch how you respond. If you are a leader, you are going to embrace the change and you're gonna run with it and you're gonna cheerlead the system, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, one time I, I heard on an audio a long time ago, Bill Whittle, he said, when I came in the company, you needed 40 districts to go regional vice president. Mm -hmm. wow. Now, for some of you guys who don't know, wow. right? Right now, you only need six. Wow. But and so when I heard that audio, I told, I asked myself, I was like, I wonder if today, if they said, "Hey, we're going back to that. You need 40 districts to go regional vice president," would I be like, "Oh, Primerica is too hard"? I'd be like, "No, I mean, I guess it is what it is, right?" If if you got recruited and I said, "Hey, you only need 40 districts," you'd be like, "Okay, right?" Because we didn't know any better. But see, sometimes. In that way, the system has gotten easier, but sometimes the system is gonna get more challenging. Maybe next month we announce, hey, to go district leader, instead of 2,500, you, you need to get 5,000. Mm -hmm. How are you going to react? Yeah. We've had compensation changes in Primerica, right? We used to get a 30% bonus, now we get a 20% bonus. But they increase the advances. You gotta cheerlead the system. <laughs> Um, sometimes we have changes in the schedule. So Shaq could come in here and be like, you know what? I, I want to do this meeting at 9 a.m., not 9.30. Or maybe we move it to 10. Or sometimes we come in here and they've double booked the room and we have to go upstairs. How do you deal with change? As a leader, you call your team and you're like, hey, this is what we're going to do now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right? You're not sulking about it. And then, of course, changes in your personality. You know, when I came in the business, I was very rough around the edges. And Shaq always used to say, dude, you have no tact, right? Look up that word, and I didn't have it, right? And I would just be just saying the wrong things to the wrong people, wrong time, and I had to change that. And some of us, we have quirks in our personality.
and we're not going to be able to attract a lot of people being the way that we are. Like one of the things that's annoying to me is when I'm talking to someone and I'm, they ask me a question, I'm not even finished answering, and they're, I can already tell they're like nodding me forward so they can say what they want to say, and they're not listening to what I'm saying, they're already preparing what they're going to say back. I can't talk to somebody like that. So I'm going to tell you, hey dude, I noticed that you're doing this, you just need to listen and wait until I'm done, then you can respond, because if you do that to clients, guess what? No one's going to do business with you, no one's going to want to join your team. So you have to embrace changes in yourself as well, right? What about goals? Leaders set goals. People that are not leaders are scared to set goals. Why aren't you setting goals? Why are you scared to talk about your goals? Why aren't you setting goals? Because you're scared about underperforming. As a leader, you gotta set the goals, right? Are you the thermometer or are you the thermostat? Are you taking the temperature or are you setting the temperature? A leader's gonna say, hey dude, it's, it's Xander, we're gonna be the top recruiters in the office. We're gonna get to 30 recruits this month. We're gonna get 10 people licensed. That's what a leader does. You can't be scared to set goals. But sometimes what happens, right? We come up short. That's okay, it happens. We miss that promotion. We miss that goal. We don't pass that exam the first time. How are you going to respond? You know, I, I passed the life exam my first time. I passed the uh, Series 6, Series 63 first time. But to go RVP, I had to take the Series 26. Yeah. And I delayed it. I was telling you the story the other day, one of you guys. And the company said, hey, you don't want to delay it. But I was the number one RVP in the company and they let me go RVP without getting the 26. And so, at, at one point, six months later, I promised them I'd get it as soon as I became an RVP. I didn't want to be held back. Six months later, I didn't get it. And then I started realizing that my guys were doing investment sales and I wasn't getting the compensation. I was like, where's the compensation going? They had been giving the compensation to someone else. Yeah. And I, I called the company and I was like, where's my comp on those investments? They said, without a securities license, you can't be a broker supervising other people. And they, they penalized me for that. And I was like, how long has this been going on? I added it up. I'm just a new little regional vice president, right? <laughs> 10 grand it had cost me. Wow. Oh. So I was like, oh man, I gotta go take this test. I took it, I got a 69, I failed it. Right, so I've been through this stuff. That was a ten thousand dollar mistake. Tons of money on the line. I still failed the exam, right? But you just got to keep when 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 you come up short, right? When someone on your team doesn't pass the exam, when you don't hit a goal, when you don't get that promotion, you got to just be talking about next, man. We're gonna do it again. We're gonna turn around. We're gonna make it happen one more time. We're gonna get back on that horse, right? And that's kind of the mindset and the attitude of the leader versus complaining and commiserating. Right? Look up that word, commiserate. Yes. We both talk about how bad things are. Right? Have you ever noticed that? I don't do this stuff. I haven't done it in years. But if someone comes to me and they talk about how bad things are, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the subject or I'll be too positive for them and then they're going to go run away and go cry to someone else. <laughs> I'm, not going to, I'm not going to commiserate. I'm not a fun person to do that with. Yes. You know? So that, that's not me. Rejection. You gotta, as a leader, you gotta normalize rejection. People are going to say no. It is going to hurt in the beginning. It is a muscle and you will develop that muscle and you will become more resilient when it comes to rejection. But rejection is completely normal. Like if Paco calls me and he's like, man, you wouldn't believe it. I made all these calls and then the people said they were gonna come and then they didn't and the one guy that did and then he didn't join and the one guy that joined and he backed out. I mean, you telling me a story like that is like you telling me that the sun came up today. That's normal stuff, right? What do you think? I'm just like, whoa, all that happened to you? Dude, that, that, try that 10 days in a row. Let me see where you're at, yeah. right? And this is full-time talk. That's for full-timers. But rejection, like, we gotta laugh at it. It's funny, man. It's yeah. hilarious that someone comes in, they don't, you know, they want to change, they're miserable in terms of their career, their life, we give them an opportunity, then they're selling to us why they can't do it, and then they leave. You know, a lot of times over a hundred dollars. Someone doesn't yeah. want to change their life because a hundred dollar cost, right? Or they're sitting down with someone making money, having a business, telling them they can do it, then they go talk to their friend at Gold's Gym. 
who says Primerica doesn't work and you listen. It's hilarious. <laughs> Why are we getting mad? Why are we getting mad? Right? So rejection is normal. It doesn't, you're, you're human. If it hurts, you're human. That's okay, but you can get past how you respond to it. And excuse giving, right? Giving them and taking them. As a leader, you don't give excuses. You accept responsibility. This is a huge thing that I learned. Everything that happens is your fault. That's the way you gotta live your life. You do not assess blame to other people. You accept responsibility. So that's the first step. You will be successful if every single thing that happens, you take responsibility and you blame it on yourself. Once you start to blame other people, you are in the loser zone. It's because of this person, it's because of that person, it's because this happened, because that happened, right? You are where you are because the choices that you make and even the problems that seem unforeseen, right? Hey, what the books say, I'm not that smart, what the books say is you attracted those problems. So you gotta change. Now, taking excuses, this is another part of leadership. If you are going to be like Shaq says, a doormat and everyone's walking all over you, you're not going to be a leader. Our job is to help people change their behaviors, their thinking, their habits. That's one of the definitions of leadership. So Xander calls me and he's like, hey, I'm not coming to training today because I'm tired. No, dude, you need to come. Yeah. You know you need to come. You're never going to get better and you're never going to have a team if you're using excuses like that. You want to be tired and broke, you want to be tired and rich. Yeah. You got to show up. You can't take excuses from people. And sometimes, right, I'm, I'm, this is the leadership game. I'm not talking to everybody, but sometimes, right, there's going to be friction there. That's what leadership is about. See, when you hear those Hall of Fame speeches, when you hear players that are MVPs and they talk about their coaches, they don't say, man, he was so easy on me. It was so awesome, right? That's not it. it was, we hated each other sometimes. He was tough on me, and sometimes I didn't want that coaching, but that's why I am where I am today. Well, you are in a position to do that for people. Now, that doesn't mean that you're unreasonable or that you act like a boss, but you can't be taking excuses from people. Right? They have to get better. You can make excuses or you can make money. You can't make both. And the last one is emotionally, and this is a big one, right? Um, I've been reading about this that, you know, cause, cause sometimes I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, making, I'm making money, I have a substantial amount of money, I have nice things all around me, and I gotta check my emotions. I'm like, why don't I feel amazing right now? You gotta check your emotions, you gotta manage your emotions. You know, sometimes people say, they say, I felt better when I was in the trenches, when I had nothing and I was working, now I have everything and you know I was happier back then. That's not how it's supposed to be. You gotta check your emotions, you gotta, be, you gotta show gratitude, you gotta, you gotta be thankful for what you have, man. And you can't take things super serious. Um, you know, when it comes to emotions, if something is not gonna matter a week from now or a month from now, then don't get emotional about it. I never get emotional in traffic. I don't understand, like, if you talk to Shaq, you can't have a five minute conversation with him on the road where he's like, oh my God, this, that, like, yeah. how many things can happen every time I talk to you, and it's only, we're only talking for five minutes. Like, who cares? You know, they're in a rush, they have to get somewhere. We have freedom, it doesn't matter. Let them do whatever they're doing, you just drive, right? That's the way I think about it. Like, you're in a rush, dude, go. I don't care, I'm not gonna get mad about stupid things. Life is an emotional game. Your life is the quality of your emotions. A lot of the things that we want is not because we want those things, it's how those things will make us feel. Right. It's how being fit will make us feel. It's how being in that relationship will make us feel. This is an emotional game. And when I think about aging and getting older, that's the number one, that's the thing I put on the top of the list. I don't know what else there is great about aging, right? But that one thing about getting older is emotional intelligence. Yeah. When you see people and they blow up, when you see people and they show a lack of composure, they're emotionally unintelligent, right? 
You guys have seen me. I, I let it out sometimes. I, I can get mad. I can get intense. I can get in people's face. You, some of you guys have seen that. But for the most part, I'm very even keel. I'm not, you're not going to see me get super high and super low. That's not going to happen because I've learned how to, I used to, I, but now I've learned how to manage my emotions, right? If you can, if you can learn how to do this, see, your, your inside is a reflection, I think I read this or one of you guys, I don't know yeah. where, right? Your, your inner world is a reflection of how you respond to people in the outer world. You're not going to get to me. What are you gonna say? You're gonna say I'm an idiot? Okay, you're gonna say Primerica's this? That kind of upsets me when people say things about Primerica, but even that, I can, I can brush that off. But yeah. like, it's gonna be very difficult for you to offend me. That's, that's a decision that I made, not because I'm some amazing person, right? I've made a decision that I'm not gonna be easily offended because that's gonna throw me off, right? So you say something to me and it makes me feel bad, right? Now my day's messed up. I don't wanna have a bad day, so I choose to just let everything go. Right. That's the way you gotta be, right? So this is a big thing in leadership because people don't wanna follow emotionally unstable people. And if you can learn this as well as everything else, then people will want to be around you. And you'll go from being a follower, which is conforming to what everybody else is doing, to being a leader where people now want to be like you. And people want to come hear you. And people want to be around you. And people want to learn from you. And people want to get coached by you, right? They want tough coaching by you. So I thought that was uh, you know, just a good little reminder of what we're actually all here for and, and you know, what we need to change. Um, but today is the...